What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I have the Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace find of the year for me so far. And uh, let's just jump right into it and I'll show you what I picked up. All right guys, so it's a little bit of a crammed in space. I have my uh, B16 for the Honda project sitting here. And this is what I picked up. This is a Ryobi. And I always pronounce it Ryobi, but I guess it's Ryobi. Uh, I believe it's an RM, yeah, it's an RM480E. And what this is, is an electric riding lawnmower. I don't have that big of a yard. I'm not really, wasn't really looking for a riding lawnmower. And if I were going to get one, I would have gotten a zero turn. But this is what popped up on Marketplace when I was looking for uh, mowers. And I was looking for something cheap. I was trying to find a commercial walk behind. Um, something bigger than like my 20 inch push mower. Um, but this popped up um, through a friend for 200 bucks. And so I Googled it. This thing new was like $3,300, I believe, from Home Depot. Um, it's 75 amp hour, uh, fully electric. It's got three electric motors. Uh, one drives the machine itself. And then there's two for the deck. Uh, each blade has its own electric motor. Uh, for 200 bucks, it was this complete with the charger. Um, that's what that is. But there was a catch. It didn't work. Uh, all I knew was the owner said he thinks it needs batteries. It doesn't work. 200 bucks. A coworker and I go to pick it up. And I, I looked online. I tried to like Google research. And, you know, I, I was fully invested in putting brand new batteries in this thing. And what, how this works is it basically has four car batteries that's underneath the main part of the mower. Um, it's four 12 volt car batteries that are linked together in series to make it 48 volts. Okay, so I looked up the pricing and roughly they were like 200 bucks or $220 a piece for each battery from Ryobi. Uh, and that included free shipping, I believe, or maybe it was plus shipping, but anyways, it was like 220 bucks a piece. And I was totally committed to buy four brand new batteries to get this thing working. Now there was a possibility that there's a, I call it a charge controller. There's a control unit that kind of controls how all the power stuff works. There was a possibility that that could be bad. And that's about 200 bucks direct from Ryobi, which isn't ho horrible. Go to pick this mower up. And the guy says, yeah, it starts and moves, but sometimes it doesn't do anything. And what he did was he turned it on. And actually, I don't know if it'll turn on with this plugged in. And in case you don't know, always leave this plugged in if you're not using it. It's a battery tender. So he turned it on. It clicked and it was doing this... Uh, I think it's beaming because I'm not sitting in the seat, but it was doing this, right? He was able to move it like a foot. I'm going to turn this off so it stops beeping. He was able to move it a foot. I think the beeping is because I'm not sitting in the seat. But anyways, it would move a foot, and then it would start beeping, and it would stop. And he's like, you cycle the key, you'll be able to move it. Um, he said it started with the blades, and he started it. He turned the blades on, which is you pull this switch, and the blades would turn on, right? They would turn on, spin up, and then they would stop, and it would start beeping. He said start with that, so then he used this as like a lawn cart. He used this to pull like a little lawn, lawn trailer. And he said he did that until then it finally, even just moving, would start doing that. Immediately, me being a technician, I'm thinking the batteries have the voltage to turn it on. When you turn it on, it's seeing 48 volts, but they don't have the capacity for the load. Because anytime he put a load on it, trying to move it, trying to turn the blades on, it would shut down. He could leave it on all day long. So, got it home, and I've, I've already fixed this. So I'm gonna just, this is a, a spoiler. I already fixed this thing, so I know what was wrong. Take the batteries out. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace it, because I'm gonna replace a battery in this video. Took the four batteries out, checked them with a multimeter. That's all I used was a multimeter. I disconnected them all, so they were individual four 12-volt batteries. It was like, 12.1, 12.1, 12.1, 8 volts. The fourth battery had 8 volts. I knew that was a bad battery. I replaced it. The battery I ended up going with, and I'll put the link to it in the description. 
It's an Amazon affiliate link. It doesn't cost you like anything else, but it helps you support the channel. So if you're trying to buy a battery uh, for this model, it works. I'm about to put a second one in, but use the affiliate link. It helps the channel out. But anyways, I put the battery in. It fixed it. It was 160 bucks through Amazon shipped. So not a bad deal. But anyways, it works. I end up putting new blades on it. There's a video on how to replace the blades. I'll link that in the description as well. So today we're going to replace a second battery. So I tested all the batteries with a car automotive battery tester at my work. And one of the batteries had lower capacity than the other two good ones. They're all getting old and worn. I replaced the bad one. And then there's a second one that's getting the correct voltage and it's holding some capacity but it's just it's not fully there and a good example was this thing's been on the, i haven't used this mower in five days it's been on the charger non-stop it's fully charged and now it's beeping i don't know if you guys can see this it says it's at 89 percent, and i haven't done anything i just turned it on and it, it's already lost two bars of power and i'm going to turn that off because that's annoying so the capacity, it knows the capacity is not there. So immediately when I turn this thing on, I've, I'm already starting off 10% lower on capacity. We're going to see if that changes once I put the second new battery. So we're going to jump into it. I know this is a long intro, um, but let's get in on how to replace a battery and see if we can get that capacity back. Unlike my other videos, here's the tools you're going to need to replace a battery in this Ryobi 48 volt riding lawnmower. I'll put them right here. All right, guys, step one is to remove these four bolts. There's one here, 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 and here. Uh, they are T30s. I'm using an electric ratchet. You can use hand tools. I'm just using this for the speed of it. And then I just put these in the cup holder. Now this just comes off. You gotta start from the bottom and then just kind of slides out. All right, the factory battery is this color, at least on this unit, it was this grayish color. This black one's actually the new battery I put in that I already put in to fix it. Um, so this is a 75 amp hour model. Uh, you're gonna have this bracket. It's basically a tray that slides out. You will need a car jack. Uh, in the manual, they tell you to use like a lifting platform. A car jack works fine. You just got to be careful, but I'll show you how to use it. Now, if you have a 100 amp hour, you won't have this bracket. The batteries will come all the way to here. The difference between the 75 amp hour and the 100 amp hour Ryobi models is that the 100 amp hour is just bigger batteries. Um, they use the same tray. It's just the smaller batteries use a bracket like to take up the space. But the next step is we're going to lift up the seat and disconnect what we need to disconnect under there. So go ahead and tilt the seat forward. I go ahead and disconnect the seat switch, which is that white connector. And here's a tip, if this seat doesn't want to flip forward, it's probably because your handle's hitting it. So just release uh, your handle seat adjustment, move the seat backwards, and then it'll flip forward. But once you disconnect that, you'll be able to see, it's just this little push tab. You're gonna take this panel and these little release tabs, just push it and then just take this all the way off and set it to the side. So in here, what we have, this is your main battery power connection. Um, this is a very industry standard. It's used on like Zambonis and tow trucks. Like a lot of things use this connector. What we're gonna do is this is a Phillips screwdriver. We're gonna unscrew this, set that screw aside. And like I said, I'm using the cup holder for all my screws. And we're going to just disconnect it. These just pull apart. There's no like locks or anything. This screw just holds this in place. So it doesn't bounce around, but let's get a, a Phillips and remove this. Now this is kind of free and we're just going to pull it apart. 
and now the battery pack is disconnected from the vehicle. Now this is something you need to pay attention. This is like a little spacer. This goes right here, and then this bolts to the top. This just spaces this uh, connector up so it's not running into these like battery posts. So if you find this, if you miss this in the video, that's where this goes. It goes right there and just goes like that. That goes on top, screw goes in. So now the last thing we need to do under the seat is this is the bolt that basically um, kind of centers the cage or the tray where it needs to go. And also this is a battery hold down, so it's twofer. But this is a 13 millimeter and we need to take this bolt out and it's very long. All right, so the next step, uh, when I first did this and I replaced this battery, uh, I took the tray out. Um, what I'm gonna do is, the, this is a battery bracket, it just keeps tension on the back batteries, it kind of shoves them all forward. I'm gonna go ahead and release the tension on this while I just have this sitting here versus having it out. These are 13 millimeter nuts. I believe everything's 13s on here, uh, as far as this job, except for until we get to the batteries. Um, so there's a jam nut. There's a jam nut right here and the nut right here. So what I'm going to do is take this nut off on both of these. Um, and then I'm going to screw this nut this way. And that will allow this bracket to come this way. Okay. So let's do that. If you notice, there's only a few threads that stick out on this. So it's, when you go put these back on, not even all these threads on this nut engage. Um, it could be that somebody had this out before, uh, before me, and that maybe the studs threaded in there too far, which we can unscrew this a little bit now that I think about it and give us more threads. But just be careful when you go put this nut back on. It just needs to be tight. Don't go crazy because you'll pull the threads. So I'm going to spin this nut on the inside. If I can get this one, I might need a wrench. So grab a 13 millimeter wrench and just bust that loose. And we're just gonna spin it in. Okay. And that allows us to slide this bracket. So now the tension's off of the batteries. Okay. So next up is to remove the battery tray assembly. And these are 13 bolts and there's 13 millimeter nuts. They're not thread it into the frame. You need to put a wrench on the bottom. So slide a, a wrench underneath and you can use a socket and um, I got these busted loose so you can see, um, but you're going to hold the bottom, counter hold it with a wrench, hit it the top or vice versa, socket wrench, whatever you gotta do. There's the nut off the bottom and you're gonna pull this bolt up and out. And then I thread this back on and put this in the cup holder. Do that for both sides. Okay, before we slide this out, there's two spacers, one under each side. We're just gonna slide that out. They remind me of like a magnet, but they're just steel. So pull those out so we don't lose them, but that's where they go. They just slide under there. So when you tighten this down, it takes up that gap. All right, now, this is the hardest part, is you gotta pull this tray backwards. It's got, I think these batteries are like 50 pounds a piece, so it's like 200 pounds of weight. So if you're a, a small person, you might need a second hand for this. Um, and I'm on a hill, so the, the mower is actually in my driveway, and we're in the edge of the garage, so I gotta pull this uphill. Now, you can start yanking, um, what I did is, I, the first time I did this, I sat on the ground, I put my feet against the tires, and I grabbed it with two hands and pulled, like a rowing motion. So what we want to do is, be careful when you do this, this thing's 200 pounds, remember, this will crush you. We're only sliding it out until this is, like, here. We're not trying to pull the battery pack all the way out. And then don't do what I just did. I forgot this needs unplugged. This is a little sensor, it's right here on top. It unplugged when I pulled this out, but um, it just goes 
it's right there so luckily that didn't break it just came undone luckily but don't forget to undo that first so now we're going to pull this out um not halfway because if it's halfway it's going to start teetering so right about almost halfway now we're going to get the car jack all right so take your car jack and we're going to put it right here under the steel what this is going to do is support most of the battery pack. We're not going to take the battery packs all the way out. We're just going to slide them out to do our testing, or in my case, my replacing. Okay. And then now I'm going to pull the jack, and I'm going to hold on to this, and gently pull this back. But I don't, don't pull it and get overzealous and yank this thing out to where it falls out of the tracks. Um, if you do that, it's going to fall, you might injure yourself, or, or whatever. So I'm doing this by myself. I'm going to pull it until this rack gets to about here. And then one thing I should mention is you're going to have to kind of make sure your cables and stuff uh, don't get caught on anything. All right, that's as far as I'm going to go. You guys can see that's the end of the rack. This is another spacer. The jack's underneath and the battery pack's basically out. Remember, it's not held on by anything by its own weight right now, so be careful. All right, so loosening this plate, normally this would be shoved up against here. That allows us to pull these two batteries back. And like always, guys, I can't stress this enough, be careful pulling on stuff since we're on a jack. Now allows this plate to be able to come up and out. Before we pull this plate up and out, we gotta disconnect these batteries because the cables go through the inside. This is currently 48 volts. Every time we unplug a battery, it's gonna drop it down 12 volts. Now you will have, you will have these plastic covers on here and they were a pain in the ass when I first took this apart. They basically go like this and like that like that and it just keeps stuff off of the terminals you're supposed to as part of the maintenance you're supposed to clean this out anyways so like every let's say 50 hours i would slide the battery pack out like this clean all the grass and stuff out and then slide it back in check your terminals for corrosion so you're going to have to do these next steps with those black plastic covers on uh, i wish i would have recorded or remembered how they came off but the cables kind of go through uh through here so it's kind of a pain in the butt i'm sure you'll figure it out but you gotta get these cables, how these are linked, and it's, it's red to red, black to black, pretty self-explanatory, and they just connect to each other. And if you see these numbers, I have these labeled two, that one's three, this one's one, this was battery four, that was the one that tested bad. Today I'm replacing battery three, that was the other one, and I'll actually show you guys my test results here. Actually, I'm glad I decided to show you. It's battery one that's actually bad, which I don't know if that's what I just said or not. Um, so battery one back here I have to replace. So here's like the automotive tester we have at work. It, the voltage, this is when I first got it. This was before I replaced anything. Um, battery one was 12.1 volts, 166 amps. Battery two, 12.1 volts, 197 amps. Battery three, 12.1, 198. So we like those three batteries are all 12.1. And this was the fourth battery. 8.4 volts, no amps, nothing. Okay, so that's how I knew the, this battery was bad. Battery one, how the remaining three had lower amps. They all had good voltage, but this one just had lower amps. And when you run things in series, when it's a battery to a battery to a battery to a battery, they all should be equalized. They all should be the same. So if I retest them now, um, especially now that I've been using the motor for a couple weeks and it's been fully charged, I'd be interested to see what this battery is at now because it should have balanced out, but it's not. That's why it shows 90% charge when uh, I turn it on. So these aftermarket batteries come with new bolts because they're bigger. They are 13 millimeters. The factory Ryobi's are 10 millimeters. And all you're going to do is pull these caps back 
to get access to the bolts. Now refer to this video when you go back together because there's a couple cables that are different. This cable has a sensor. It goes on the back batteries, the closest to the grab handle. The two in the center are just link cables. They don't do anything but link the two batteries and you'd go color, color. So if it's a black cable, it goes to a black mark. The front is the battery pack to the chassis connection. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Red goes to red, black goes to black. Red is on what would be the passenger side or the right-hand side if it was like a car, okay? So now we're gonna do is unplug uh, these middle links so that way I can get this bar out of our way. And I got 113 and the rest are gonna be 10s because this is the aftermarket battery. Now, when you're working with batteries, you wanna make sure that you don't ground your tool if you're working on positive to any kind of chassis ground uh, right now the chassis is not grounded because we have it disconnected so we're fairly safe just be careful guys use common sense you want to keep metal stuff away from grounding out but i'm gonna go ahead and just disconnect both these 13s while i'm here and there's going to be washers on all these the aftermarket and the factory and this guy, here's that uh, extra piece. So it's gonna be a connector and they kind of are curved in the center to fit and this one's straight. You'll see they, they hold their shape pretty well. Um, but the link goes on this sensor. I think this just sends, uh, I'm guessing voltage reading, maybe it's temperature uh, to the onboard computer. Um, but here's the setup. It's a washer, lock washer, bolt. In case you need help putting this back together, that's how it goes. Bolt, lock washer, washer. And I'm just putting them down here in this tray. Now I'm gonna to switch to the 10 millimeter. And then pull the cable out. And then move on and we're gonna do it to all of them. Okay, now that I got these center cables out, we can pull this brace out and get that out of our way. All right, so now this is where you'd wanna be careful not to hit metal. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit this ground. Um, you can use a wrench or use a socket. I'm Actually, I might not even be able to get my socket in here. Let me see if I can hit it with the extension. But this would be a classic, classic hitting that positive against i don't know if you guys can see how close this is see how close like this is against the metal that's where you would uh ground out so i'm gonna take this ground off and then now there's no way i can ground this out I couldn't ground it out before because there was no chassis ground, but just be careful. All right, so now the battery packs are completely free. Or the batteries. All right, guys, I just had to pause the video here because I didn't think to mention this while recording the video. But at this point is when you would actually test using a multimeter the batteries. Uh, I wish I would have shown this at this point, but you're going to take a multimeter set to 12 volts DC, not AC. AC would be checking your house. DC voltage and negative to negative, positive to positive, and do each battery individually. It's just like testing a car battery. So you're going to test the, each battery. And what I would do is take a piece of tape or a Sharpie and write numbers one, two, three, four, just like I did with that paint marker uh, on each battery. 
and then you can even write down what the voltage is. Uh, it helps if you fully charge your pack, or at least what you think is fully charged before doing this. Um, each battery should be exactly the same. So if it's 12.1 volts or 12.5 volts, or if it's 11 volts, all four batteries should be exactly the same when they're running series. Uh, if you're testing them individually and one is different, how I had three batteries that were 12.1 volts and then that one was eight, that's the dead ringer. That eight volt battery is the bad battery. So you can test it like that. If you have a multimeter, just go to Harbor Freight, buy like the $10 multimeter. That's all you need. I'll put a link to in the description to a cheap one on Amazon. Uh, the other thing you can do is if you don't want to do that, is you can lug all four of these batteries to an auto parts store and have them test them and you'll get like the little printout like I had from my work. Um, then you can really test to see what kind of amperage they are. Uh, they're going to ask you what the cranking amps are of these. Uh, they, on my batteries, they weren't listed. Um, so I would just say that they're 500 cold cranking amps. I don't know if that's how much they actually are, um, but that's a baseline. Um, mine tested at like 200 amps. So that's where you need to go. And I wish I would have shown you, but let's continue the video of replacing these batteries. Now these batteries have go handles right here, and then you can lift these out. This is my new one. These are the old ones. Battery number one, so it's one, two, three. Battery one's the one I'm replacing, which is this guy. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift this guy out, and then get the new one in. New one's still brand new in the box. I'll go grab it. You don't need to see that. All right, this is different. So I just got the battery out. I ordered it through the same Amazon listing. You know, I just hit buy again. It's a little bit different. Here's the first one I bought. It's got the handles just like the factory one, right? This battery has a fabric handle. So it doesn't have the plastic of these guys. Does that matter? Absolutely not. So if you guys get, so, I mean, this was the same listing. I just bought these weeks apart. The terminals, and these aren't, what I noticed is that these are flip-flop from an automotive battery. You might be able to get these at AutoZone, Advanced Auto Parts, O'Reilly's, places like that. Um, but they're probably going to be a couple hundred bucks. But um, car batteries I had laying around, this side was negative, that side was positive. So I don't know if this is like a lawn mower application that they're like this or what, but um, I found these on Amazon. Anyway, so this isn't going to matter. It's just something different. Um, if you're running those um, black covers, I'm not going to put those back on personally because it's to pull this out. If you're doing maintenance, you don't need to pull the bracket off. You can just slide the pack out, clean the grass and stuff off, and then slide it back. You can, if, once you do it once, you can have this pack out, clean all the grass off, and back in in like 15 minutes. It's super easy. It's not hard at all. So, and you don't, like I say, you don't have to take that back off. Anyways, squirrel, getting off topic. Now, it's basically reverse order. Slide that battery forward. We're going to put the bracket back on. So the bracket goes on. Just like that, we're going to feed the cables through and start bolting all the cables back. The first battery I came that I can't talk. The first battery I ordered came with these 13 millimeter bolts where the factories were 10. This new battery came with 10 millimeter bolts and looks like they have Phillips in them too. So you can use a socket or a Phillips wrench. So we'll just use, uh, since these are smaller, cause you know, obviously the 13 millimeter bolts are bigger. I had to use these bolts. They still fit the factory cables just fine. I didn't have to change anything. Um, I'll just use the factory bolts and I'll just throw this in my bolt bin. But let's go ahead and get these cables back on. We're just gonna snug them down. You know, don't go super tight. Um, you know, usually these are just lead posts, so you don't need to get super crazy with it. All right, before I put these uh, back together, uh, I just want to say, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button if you find this helpful. That really helps other people find this video. And please consider subscribing to help grow my channel. I appreciate it. But let's get these cables back on. Red to red, black to black. And we'll, we'll get it back together. Okay. Now here's the end or the last cable we're going to hook up. Okay, 
Don't forget, we got to put this guy. I left the bolt in it, so I won't forget. I actually forgot the first time to put this on. Um, but don't forget to put this little sensor on. It goes on the positive side. I don't know if that matters if it's on positive or negative, but that's where it was, factory. Batteries are all hooked back up. Next, we're going to do is, remember, this is that big bolt in the center. So that doesn't go in until we slide this pack back in. You would have to put these back on the same order you took them out as, because if I remember right, this bracket sits on top of this. It just was a pain in the butt. I left these out. But like I said, put these back in. You should put these back in, but me, I left them out. Do what you want with that information. So now we're just going to take the jack and, and hold, hold the jack, hold the pack and slide it back into the chassis. All right, you're gonna shove it forward until basically it stops. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in this little guy so I don't forget. And then don't forget your two little spacers. We're gonna put those bolts in, tighten them up. Bolt, spacer, bolt. And actually before we tighten these up, I'm gonna put the nuts on can't see it my hands underneath we're going to put the main center bolt in next all right so what you're going to do is set your bolt in it's going to be hard for me to show on this GoPro but you can look down between these two batteries and you can actually see the hole where it needs to go my bracket is too far this way I need to shove it that way and then the holes right there ish and then you're going to tighten this down all right so this bolt does two things it holds the batteries in place but it also locks the tray to the frame so it, it's dual purpose however here we're going to go ahead and put our spacer oh guys i messed up i put this bracket on backwards that screw hole is supposed to be over there Ugh, all right, <laughs> so I'm not perfect. So I got to unscrew this and slide that bracket back out. Guys, I just realized I screwed up. This bracket only goes in one way and I wasn't paying attention. The screw hole has to be on this side. So in order for me, I got to take this out and I can't get this bracket out and flip it because these cables go through it. So I got to redo, I got to take these two cables off to take this bracket off and flip it so that screw is on that side. So don't make that mistake. Make sure this hole is on this side. So now I gotta take this battery pack back out. So I won't show all that, we'll just continue once this is flipped. All right, take two. I took the battery pack back out, flip that around. So it's back to being correct. We're gonna take our little plate, set it there. We're gonna go ahead and plug our pack back in. I'm just gonna set that there until I get this plugged in. Take your Phillips screw, slide it through. That's not the Phillips. There's actually two holes. I'm gonna go with this one. And then screw that down. Don't go super crazy, this is just plastic. All right, so the last thing to do is take your seat switch and you feed the wire through your panel and put your panel back on. If I put this on the right way. Plug it back into your seat, and then you can put your seat down. All right, so back here, we're done up front. So back here, we're gonna tighten down this bracket. And you do that by sliding this nut all the way to the rear. Same with the other one. 
and then we're just going to tighten them. You just try and go snug. Kind of do them evenly. You don't have to do like one turn, one turn. Just do a few and then go back and forth. And check how snug it needs to hold the batteries. And that's actually probably pretty good there. I'm going to do just a little bit. You don't want to go crazy on this because you don't want to crush the battery or crack the plastic. So once that's done, you're going to take the two nuts. And these are kind of like jam nuts to lock those in place. And like I said, there's not much threads on them. And then what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and tighten this. You may want to use two wrenches. I'm just going to snug and then tighten down this guy. All right, so the last major step is when you tighten these. So we're going to have to hold it with a wrench from underneath, hit it from the top. All right, so final step, let's put the plastic cover back on. All right, so the top of this has these uh, semi hooks and they're gonna go into these spots right here. So you'll see it. It doesn't fit super great, but then just put your screws in. Right, guys i went ahead and flipped it around because i was going to plug it in and charge it and we'll see what the capacity is at but just turning it around and i haven't charged it since we did this literally just all i did was do a yui turn it on 100 percent capacity so we were at 90 percent. so just changing out that battery we're back to 100 percent i'm gonna go ahead and get it on the charger and that way i know all the batteries are charged all right guys, so she's on the charger. I'm already pretty stoked to see that it's showing 100% capacity and I haven't even charged it yet. Um, batteries right off the shelf usually probably don't have 100% charge. Who knows how long they were sitting at the manufacturer and then at Amazon, but she's gonna run great. She already does run great. Replacing one battery got this girl back in the yard mowing and now we're just extending the runtime from cutting uh, maybe a half an acre and it's starting to poop out to who knows may i cut an acre acre and a half now i believe this mower is supposed to be like a two acre mower um so if i had two acres then i maybe i'd want to replace all four batteries but for right now uh i'm 160 bucks times two so 320 bucks invested plus 25 or 30 bucks for the blades uh, i'm really excited that you know 400 bucks i'm in this mower it runs great it turns way better than i thought it would it turns you know, obviously not like a zero turn where it could do a 360, but it has a really sharp steering angle and it does really good up against the house. Um, so I was originally going to flip this mower since I didn't think it'd be a good for my smaller yard, but it just turns so well. It fires right up because it's electric. No putting gas in it, especially with gas prices, but it works great. Anyways, guys, uh, that's it for this video. That's how you replace a battery or two or three or four. You just repeat the process. There's no learning or programming. You put the battery in, charge it, you're good to go. If you thought this video was useful, helpful, insightful, or stupid, drop a thumbs up. Please hit the subscribe button. Consider subscribing to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps out my channel grow. Links to the parts in this mower uh, that I've replaced, uh, the other videos on how to do the blades, that will be in the description as long as, as also links to Amazon, 
to my affiliate. It doesn't cost you extra. If you're going to buy these parts, these batteries I use, use the link in my description that helps my channel out. Um, the next video for this mower, uh, it squeaks real bad going through the yard. It's, there's some bushing or something that's loose and it's just causing a squeak. So that's going to be a video of, I don't know if you can hear it. Something in the steering is squeaking and we're going to figure out what it is and fix that because it's kind of annoying, uh, because it's electric, it's silent and you're mowing and all of a sudden you hear squeak, squeak, squeak. Um, so we'll fix that in an upcoming video. So subscribe if you want to see that or more fixes and things on this Ryobi. The 100 hour mark on this mower, you got to change or top off the differential oil and we'll do that and I'll show you how to do it and how to save yourself some money. Do it yourself right at your own house. Don't pay somebody to do it for you. It's not that hard. Um, so subscribe if you wanna see that. But anyways guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you around.